you have probably already heard of the K6 ARK NFED half wave antenna kit. This thing is super tiny, but did you also know that you can build this as a one to one ballon for a dipole? Today I'm going to show you how to build it in this configuration. Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob, WV7W, and today we're going to build this one-to-one -one ballon for a dipole with a kit designed by Adam, K6ARK. Now, I bought this kit with the sole purpose of building it for a portable link dipole. And as I was searching around for a how-to on the dipole build, I discovered that there aren't any. This video is a condensed overview of my build. I've added a lot of tips and tricks as I do the build, and although I recommend that you watch this all the way through, I've added chapter markers so you can quickly jump to the steps you're looking for. So let's go to the bench and let's put this thing together. Okay, let's take a look at this kit here. This is the one with the female BNC, and I'm going to do this as a one-to-one -one ballon instead of the 49 to 1 on on that is you pretty typically see uh, being built. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything here. Got our 26 gauge poly stealth. Our magnet wire. The K6 ARK sticker. The three-quarter inch heat shrink tubing that will go around the toroid once we uh, get it built. We're not going to use this. We're not going to make a uh, trap. So set that aside. And since we're not going to build the trap, we're not going to need this extra piece of heat shrink either. So we'll set it aside. Got our print circuit board. This thing is tiny. We've got our 50-43 core for our toroid. A little piece of heat shrink. The female BNC. And this tiny little guy here is the 100 picofarad capacitor that we are not going to need, so we'll set it off to the side because we're not building a un -un, or a uh, yeah we're not building an unknown we're building a a one to one ballon. So so first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to cut this in half. And then, according to the instructions, we are going to strip off about an eighth inch. Now I'm going to tin this wire a little bit, just to make it a little easier to solder. And I had a bit much there, so we'll go ahead and trim this off. And then we're going to run it through the strain relief, which is right next to it. And if you've watched Adam's video on his 49 to 1 on, on it takes a little bit of finesse to get this through here without kinking the wire. So just take your time, do it nice and slow. Next, we're going to get ready to wind our toroid. 
So we'll uncoil our wire here. Trim off this curly part here. Won't miss that little bit. And carefully unwind this so you don't kink it. It's not a very long piece, so it's not very hard to do. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically fold it in half. This. So I don't have to pull through those loose ends. Now when you're winding these, make sure you don't get any kinks in the wire. That's the main thing. You pull them evenly. So you count the number of times through so that's really two wines. And notice that I am, before I pull it all the way through, I'm folding it up to get it nice and tight against the outside of the of the core just makes it wind a lot better so one two three four five that's six this makes nine we could stop here but we'll go to a couple we got room. It's one to one, so it's not changing the, you know, the transformer ratio by doing more. You're just by having more winds around it. You're just getting more current transfer. All right, and there is our toroid wound. one of these we're going to solder our other piece of polystealth on along with a piece of heat shrink now the trick to soldering to to this magnet wire is you got to get the enamel burned off and so I'm going to show you a trick to that in just a minute here let me strip this so what I do is I get a little llama solder And let that blob go all the way around that wire and it'll burn that enamel coating right off. Make sure you clean your iron off good afterwards because it's going to leave that, you don't want that on the tip of your iron. As you can see, it's kind of got a tin on there. Take a little exacto knife and just clean it off good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over about halfway where the And the same with my wire. Make 
take some needle nose pliers and just kink this down real good. Because if you don't have it nice and flat, that heat shrink will not fit over there. So you might be able to see them, it's pretty small, but there's three holes in kind of a triangular pattern and it goes in, ground, and out. So kind of in that triangle pattern. And then when you look at the remaining wires, they're gonna be in, ground, and out. You can smell the enamel burning off when it cooks off. And that's the number one problem people have with these toroids. Is not getting all the enamel off and not getting a good connection. Winding them isn't that terribly difficult. But getting all that stuff off there and knowing you got a good solder joint that's going to make continuity is... Challenging. Now this other wire will go through the strain relief where it says counterpoise. You're not going to solder to that, but that's where it goes. It comes out through there. And then these go in ground. These were the two that were wound together. Get those in there. And then the last one goes to the out. And it's okay that you've got some room between the toroid and the PC board because you're gonna need it when you go to when you go to uh, solder the center conductor of the BNC connector. Because they're going to come up through here and, and you're going to need to be able to move things out of the way. Now you'll notice that these don't fit in here real good. So you kind of have to bend them out just a smidge. And it's okay that there's a little bit of room there because you're going to need to be able to get some line under there. And so I think I'm going to put a little flux on here just to make it a little easier to get things in here. Let me get one of these grounds on here. Tack first. Careful, because when you do that, that's going to be hot. And kind of get to bend it out of the way to get to that center conductor. Okay, 
No continuity between the two, that's good. Good on the ground. This one should go to the center pin. So we're good. So now we got left is to put our line under here, our loop, and put the heat shrink on, and we will be done. So last thing we're going to do is we're going to put these little banana plug sockets. So this part, these are the banana plugs themselves. These are two millimeters. And we're going to put those on here. That way we don't have to leave our antenna connected. It gives us the option to be able to have um, multiple different size um, antenna elements on here. I'm going to make this as a link dipole, but I could also have, you know, just specific band and not have to have another one of these. So it gives you just more options. So those are about the right length. I'm going to twist these a little bit. We'll tin them. Throw a little go-go uh, juice in there. A little bit of flux. And these, and then we'll use my little fingers here to make it a little easier. So there you have it, completed K6ARK one-to-one ballon for a link dipole, or mini dipole. As you can see, this isn't a terribly difficult build if you take your time. In the end, you'll have a very small portable QRP antenna for that summit or park activation, or maybe just a hike into nature. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button so you know when my next video comes out. Until next time, 73s.